Hello guys, this is Fib TV Sri Lanka and once again welcome to a brand new science chapter in grade 10 science and this is grade 10 9th lesson resultant force. The resultant of several forces. When more than one force is applied, the single force that gives the same result as that of all the contributing forces is known as the resultant force of the individual contributing forces. When more than one force is applied, the single force that gives the same result as that of the all the contributing forces is known as the resultant force of the individual contributing forces. Many people take part in pushing the car instead of just one person. All the individual forces combine to form a large force in the same direction and the task becomes easier. Forces applied on objects can have various directions. In this in this lesson we'll discuss about those two directions. The resultant of two collinear forces forces having the same line of action, the resultant of two parallel forces forces having parallel but different line of action. In this lesson we will talk about those two directions resultant of two collinear forces resultant of two collinear forces acting along the same direction when pulling on fishing nets the task can be accomplished more easily if a large group of group of people take part in the pulling net in the same direction when pulling on fishing nets the task can be accomplished more easily if a large group of people take part in pulling the net in the same direction because all the forces act in the same direction the fishing net can be successfully pulled here all the forces are applied in the same direction and along the same line here means when pulling fishing nets so we have a picture for our example pulling fishing nets now let us investigate a way of finding the resultant of two collinear forces acting along the same direction activity 1 in your textbook items required a trolley three newton balances and two pulleys and a ring so here the method you can read it i will skip the method the observation and the conclusion of this activity is that is when two collinear forces act along the same direction the resultant of the two forces is equal to the sum of the two individual forces that is when two collinear forces act along the same direction like this the resultant of the two forces is equal to the sum of the two individual forces so that means the sum of these two are equal to the resultant of this force resultant force If we get this as an x, the sum of two forces are equal to the resultant force of this object. So this is example one. Two children are pulling a thre thread connected to a box placed on a table in the same direction. The force applied by one child is eight newtons, while that of the other child is six newtons. We learned by the previous activity that the resultant of the two forces is equal to the sum of the two individual forces. So the answer for this example is six newtons plus eight newtons equal fourteen newtons. Answer for this is fourteen newtons. So let's solve the activity number one. We have two situations in activity nine point one question number one. So the resultant of this is hundred newtons plus two hundred newtons equal three hundred newtons. So in this situation, the resultant of this is sixty newtons. Twenty plus forty equal sixty. A child is pushing an object placed on a table with a force of five newtons in a certain direction, while another child is pulling it in the same direction with a force of seven newtons. What is the resultant of these two forces? So the resultant of these two forces are same like this. Some one child is pushing, and meanwhile the other child is pulling in the same direction. So five newtons plus seven newtons equal twelve newtons. Resultant of two collinear forces acting along opposite directions. The result of applying forces in various directions is a non-utilization of the force productively. Go cars used to carry children can be pulled from the front or pushed from the back in order to move it. 
If both a pull from the front and push from the back are given to the car, moving the car would be easier as a large resultant will operate on the car. Now let us find the resultant of two collinear forces acting in opposite direction. Previously we discussed about the resultant of two collinear forces acting in same directions. So this is activity number two in your lesson. Items required are a trolley, two newton balancers, two smooth pulleys, measuring weights. This is the figure and you can understand by this figure. So this is the method. Let's read it. Record the observations on the motion of the trolley after applying four newtons force on each balancers. Balancers means newton balancers. Record the observations on the motion of the trolley after applying four newtons force on the balance A and six newton force on balance B. Repeat the above step applying a six newton force on the balance B and six newton force on the balance A. So, when two collinear forces are exerted on an object in opposite direction with a direction in the direction of the larger force. So, this is the conclusion of the previous activity and when two collinear forces are exerted on an object in opposite directions, the resultant is given by their difference with the direction in the direction of the larger force. So, this means if the forces act along different directions to find the resultant, we need to find the difference of those two forces. We can write the answer as the direction of the larger force like 20 newtons to the west larger force and the direction of the larger force. You will observe that the trolley does not move in the first case. The trolley remains in equilibrium. So this is these are the observations of the activity. First case we apply 4 newtons for both A and B newton balances. So it remains in equilibrium. In the second instance, the extra force which is applied in the direction of A than in the direction of B is 2 newtons. Since in this instance, the resultant is 2 newtons in the direction of B. In the third instance, the trolley does not move because it remains in equi equilibrium. We put 6 newtons in both directions. So it is in equilibrium. Exercise 9.2 the forces applied by two children in order to push a box resting on a horizontal plane is shown in the figure. They applied 15 newtons to east and 11 newtons for west. What is the larger force? The larger force is 15. This is the larger force. So we take this and 15 newtons minus 11 newtons equal 4 newtons to east. The final answer is like this. If this object remain in equilibrium and if this is 10 newtons, the what is the value of x? If this object is in equilibrium, both sides should be same. So it is 10 newtons. Resultant of two parallel forces. There are two parallel forces acting on two different points of the motor car. However, that when two forces act along the same direction, the resultant is the sum of those two forces. Resultant of the two forces, 150 newtons plus 200 newtons. Since both forces act in the same direction, so the answer is 350 newtons. Because the both forces act in the same direction, we need to add those forces. To experimentally check that the resultant of two parallel forces are equal to their sum. So this is the activity 3. Items required are a strip of wood with 3 holes drill dash shown in the figure like this and 3 newton balancers to fix for those points x, y, z. You can read the method and I will skip the method. In order to find the resultant of two parallel forces acting along the same direction, the forces to, the two forces must be added. So this is the conclusion of previous activity and that is in order to find the resultant of two parallel forces acting along the same direction, the two forces must be added.
when the strip of wood is at rest we would observe that the sum of the radians of the newton balances a and b is equal to that of, of the newton balance c this is the observation of this activity and what is the reason for this statement so let's read the statement again. When the strip of wood is at rest, you would observe that the sum of the readings of the Newton balances A and B is equal to that of the Newton balance C. So once again, let's see the picture first, the activity setup. So this is the Newton balance A and this is Newton balance B. This is Newton balance C. Newton balances A and B are situated to same directions while C is placed in different direction. So that means the sum of A, B is equal to C. So the reason for this is it is because the resultant of the two forces on A and B is equal to the magnitude of the force on C. I just discussed this. Example number one. So we have a setup here. There are two parallel forces acting along the same direction and one is 8 newtons while the other one is 16 newtons. Two strong strings attached to a trolley is pulled by a force of 8 newtons on one string and a force of 16 newtons on the other string, keeping the two strings parallel. Find the resultant of those two forces. Resultant of the two forces is equal to 8 newtons into 16 newtons. 24 newton exercise 9.3 when a trolley placed on the table is pulled by two strings attached to it keeping the two strings parallel to each other the resultant force is 20 newtons so the sum of these values a and b is 20 newtons the force exerted on the string a is 12 newtons and we need to find the force exerted by string b and that is x sum of two forces exerted on the string a and b are 20 newtons so 12 newtons plus x equal 20 newtons if we, if we subtract 12 20 x equal 8 the value for x is 8 newtons Resultant of two inclined forces, not parallel inclined. So it's like this. Let us now investigate how to find the resultant of two inclined forces. When two such forces are applied on an object, the object does not move in either of the direction of P or Q, either the direction of directions of P and Q. In such an instance, the direction of motion of the object lies in the direction between the two forces. So it's like this between the P and Q forces and like this one it moves in this line in between P and Q so this is miscellaneous exercise in your textbook related to this lesson and let's discuss this if an object is pulled by two forces 10 Newton and 6 Newton along the same direction what is the resultant of the two forces so let's do this 10 newtons plus 6 newtons equals 16 newtons. If the two forces are applied along two opposite directions, what would be the resultant of these two? So we need to get the difference of these forces to get the resultant. If the forces applied forces applied along two different directions, two opposite directions. So the larger one is 10 and the smaller one is 6. 4 newton is the answer. 4 newton to the east. 4 newtons to east. What is the resultant of the two parallel forces shown below? It's also 10. 6 newtons plus 4 newtons equal 10 newtons. What is the force that can be applied in the opposite direction so as to make the resultant zero? Illustrate it using a figure. So the figure is like this if the two parallel forces act along the same directions are 4 newton and 6 newton the force applied on opposite direction is also is 10 newtons we need to get the sum of these two forces 4 newton and 6 newton is equal to 10 newton so guys thanks for watching and if you have any question related to this lesson leave a comment and if you learn anything from this lesson put a like and leave a comment too
Don't forget to subscribe. So bye bye.